Hello, everyone. Welcome to Door County Reads Festival 2022. Please use the chat feature to ask questions or share your experiences. We can't promise that you're going to that we are going to address your questions during this session, but we do thank you for participating. And some of your thoughts and questions might be addressed at future sessions as well. And one more reminder, um, if you're going to be tweeting about this, our hashtag is hashtag Door County Reads. So we are just so happy that you're joining us for our 15th annual celebration of reading together in the winter in Door County. We bring you numerous related arts and cultural events to illuminate our chosen books. I'm Alan Kapischke, your co-host for today, and I would like to introduce Door County Library Director, Tina Kukuski. Thank you, Alan. The 15th anniversary of the Door County Community Read gives us the opportunity to look back at past books and events, of course, but also to reflect on what is special about Door County and Wisconsin. The Door County Reads 2022 featured author Michael Perry is Wisconsin born and raised and writes about his life and the folks he knows. Themes from his book center on life in Wisconsin. So too will the upcoming programs and events for Door County Reads 2022. The 15th anniversary also gives us the opportunity to reframe Door County Reads a bit by moving ever so slowly into festival land. We are doing that by not only featuring a specific Wisconsin writer this year, but also featuring other Wisconsin writers over the two and a half weeks of Door County Reads. We think this is cause to call this event Door County Reads Festival 2022. During this retrospective program, we will hear from people who have participated in past Big Read Door County and Door County Reads events. And we will also hear from writers around Wisconsin who will talk about how Wisconsin influences their writing and their lives. Please join us in looking back year by year and book by book at the history of Door County's annual community reading event and also in GRI hearing from current Wisconsin writers. Now this program, which uh, we have called Door County Reads or sometimes Big Read Door County in the past, it began as a collaboration between Peninsula Players Theater and Door County Library. In 2007, the Players Board charged me with developing programming that would connect with the community in the off season. I came back to them with this very ambitious proposal for a national endowment for the arts program called The Big Read. When we worked through the NEA, that's when we called it The Big Read Door County. When Door County Library took it over a few years later, that's when we went to uh, Door County Reads. And now we're going to Door County Reads Festival. Um, so when I brought this to the board, to their credit, they went all in. We got funding, we got partners, we got audience. It became clear that the community was hungry for this kind of programming. So those first three years were produced by the players under the umbrella of the National Endowment for the Arts. And since then, Door County Library took it over. But I think it's important to acknowledge the early support of the NEA, Peninsula Players Board of Directors, Becca Berger, who is then director of Door County Library, and the Friends of Door County Libraries. Additional funders and partners included the Door County Community Foundation, the Raybrook Foundation, Door County Medical Center, MMG Foundation, numerous program partners who joined us early on. Thousands have been, have been enriched by their reading and the related activities while continuing to build and strengthen the bonds of our community. I'm also proud of the fact that this community read incorporate, incorporates the arts and a variety of arts disciplines to a greater extent than any other community that I'm aware of. And I believe that is central to the popularity and longevity of Door County Reads. We had Nora Bly and Lieutenant Governor Barbara Lawton, award-winning writers, composers, actors, art exhibits, community dances, concerts, book discussions, classes, and play readings. Play readings, in fact, were an essential part of it and we at Peninsula Players at the time eventually grew that part of it into the winter play reading series, The Plays the, Sing, the, Plays the Thing. <laughs> now the NEA Big Read provides a reading list from which the featured book is chosen. And the book that was chosen for the first Big Read Door County was The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck centers on the Job family. 
hardworking farmers who have lost everything in the Oklahoma Dust Bowl in the 1930s. Seeking better opportunities, they decide to make the arduous trek to California. Their situation, however, fails to improve as the Jodes struggle to find work. Hey, Door County Reads, this is Alan Kapischke, and um, I just wanted to share some memories from our very first read in 2008, Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Um, it was really exciting. We had our Lieutenant Governor, Barbara Lawton, introduce at our kickoff. We had Nor Bly telling stories in his inimitable way. He actually met John Steinbeck once and, and told a story about that and, and other stories. Uh, the kickoff was a thrill. And then one of my favorite things about these is when we talk about the creative process. In that first year, we had the folks who made the Grapes of Wrath opera. It had premiered just a year prior. We had nationally known artists, Ricky Ian Gordon, Eric Simonson, and Michael Corey come in and talk about how did they take all of this and distill it down into a story that you could make into an opera. Um, it was a thrilling night at Bjorklinden. One of the last events uh, was a play reading. So I taught a class at the clearing that a bunch of community folks took, and um, we worked on the play and presented a play reading at the Ephraim Village Hall on a super cold, super windy night. Um, it was so bad. We, several of us made sure we brought jumper cables and stayed until we made sure that everybody's car started properly. We had um, uh, probably about 15 people in the cast and probably about 15 people in the audience, but we were thrilled that they came out and, and celebrated with us even on such a cold, cold, windy night. I think the wind chills were down like 40 below or something crazy like that. Um, but it was a thrilling way uh, to kick this whole thing off. And here we are 14 years later with our 15th Door County Reads, and I'm just thrilled. Thank you all so much for being a part of it. In 2009, the Big Read was once again awarded to Door County, and the chosen book was The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain, an 1876 novel about a boy growing up along the Mississippi River. It is set in the 1840s in the town of St. Petersburg, which is based on Hannibal, Missouri, where Twain lived as a boy. In the novel, Tom Sawyer has several adventures, often with his friend Huckleberry Finn. Hello, so we're here to talk about Door County Reads, which started out as the Big Read Door County 15 years ago. My name is Beth Locke and I'm the Youth Services Librarian at Sturgeon Bay. And I'm Laura Kayakan, the Adult Services Librarian in Sturgeon Bay. Next You're number year. two. Um, and I think Alan chose most of these original yeah, books. Yeah. Uh, again, we had an NEA grant this year mm -hmm. and we did Tom Sawyer and this is the first year I got involved. I remember uh, creating a um, character of Tom Sawyer's aunt. What was her name? Aunt Polly. Aunt Polly. Aunt Polly, I think. And put her in the middle of the library. Oh, and, um... scared the, the Jesus out of people. <laughs> in my rocking chair from the children's department, we had this mannequin dressed in costume from the time. And people just weren't expecting to see a little old lady sitting in a rocking chair. So yeah. big read events in the second year, other than scary Aunt Polly, included Gary Jones, comparing the adventures of Tom Sawyer to the adventures of Huckleberry Finn, the showing of the 1973 Tom Sawyer musical, a PBS Wishbone episode, A Tale in Twain, a production of the James DeVita play adaptation at Sevastopol, and the 1917 silent film Tom Sawyer with discussion. My Antonia by Willa Cather was chosen for the 2010 NEA Big Read Door County. The novel tells the stories of an orphan boy from Virginia, Jim Burden, and the elder daughter in a family of Bohemian immigrants, Antonia Shimerda, who are each brought as children to be pioneers in Nebraska towards the end of the 19th century. The first year in the very new place leaves strong impressions in both children, affecting them lifelong. 
The kickoff event for My Antonia brought many interesting happenings to Door County readers, including a speech by Miss Door County Katie Sawyer, themes and aspects of My Antonia presented by Estella Lauder, audience participation in learning authentic American folk dance from the Door County Folk Alliance, and the unveiling of a commissioned artwork depicting author Willa Cather by Karen Kapischke. My name is Baptist Paul, and I live in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I primarily write books for children, picture books, both fiction and nonfiction. And one of my most recent titles is called To Carnival, A Celebration in St. Lucia. I chose to make Wisconsin my home because of family, and that means a lot to me. St. Lucia and Wisconsin have a lot of similarities. And nature is one of those things that inspires my writing. So I find a lot of inspiration being out in nature and that definitely enhances my writing. And Wisconsin has a lot of nature. The 2011 book Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury tells the story of Guy Montag and his transformation from a book burning fireman to a book reading rebel. Montag lives in an oppressive society that attempts to eliminate all sources of complexity, contradiction, and confusion to ensure uncomplicated happiness for all of its citizens. 2011 was the first year that Door County Reads took over from the Big Read Door County, retaining the format and programming ideas that made the Big Read yearly events popular in Door County. In addition to multiple book discussions, the keynote speaker was Sam Weller, author of the Bradbury Chronicles, The Life of Ray Bradbury, discussing his award-winning biography. A unique bonfire event occurred where community members read quotations from their favorite books or authors, bringing to life the idea in Fahrenheit 451 of rebels who memorized entire books so they would not be lost to humanity. My name is Miranda Paul. I live just outside of Green Bay, Wisconsin. I write books for young children through tweens, many of which are about science, nature, or social justice. Some of the titles of books that I've written are called Speak Up, Water is a Water, One Plastic Bag, Whose Hands Are These, and Little Library's Big Heroes. When I travel around the country and to other countries, students often ask me if Wisconsin is cold, if I like it there, why do I live there? And some of the answers that I give them are, yes, many months of the year it's cold, but that makes it perfect to cozy up with a blanket and a cup of tea or cocoa and write or read. Um, when they ask me if I like it, the answer is yes, I do. There's lots of green spaces here, a lot of nature, and that fuels my writing. I'm a very curious and wonder-filled person, and being able to look out a window and have access to birds and other views of nature really helps me write. So I do enjoy what Wisconsin uh, fuels me with in terms of my writing ideas and the writing process itself. On the fifth anniversary of the annual community reading event, the book was again chosen from the Big Read list. The Heart is a Lonely Hunter is the debut novel by the American author Carson McCullers, who was 23 at the time of publication. It is about a deaf man named John Singer and the people he encounters in a 1930s mill town in the state of Georgia. Crossroads at Big Creek hosted the keynote speech in 2012 when Frederick Doc Heidi combined his love of music and psychology with the address, What the Heart is Hunting for, a Psychological Perspective. Music and treats were provided at the event. NWTC hosted a Southern cooking class and the film Member of the Wedding was shown. Hi, I'm Jennifer Morales. I live and write in Viroqua, Wisconsin and I am the author of Meet Me Halfway Milwaukee Stories. I feel like whenever I introduce myself as a Wisconsin writer, I first have to clear up one question. Which state is Wisconsin? So to get us off on the right foot, um, I'll just point out that Wisconsin is not Minnesota. It's also not Michigan. We are the one in the middle. 
so if it helps you, you can keep it clear by maybe doing an M and then a W and then an M. And it really doesn't matter whether you get Minnesota and Michigan mixed up because we're the W in the middle. Um, the second misconception about Wisconsin riders is that we are not in flyover country. Uh, we're doing amazing work here and um, you know, maybe we might be tucked away in hills and romantic orchards and abandoned sugar shacks and all that, but we're also riding in big cities with skyscrapers. We write in noisy coffee shops while wearing moody outfits, just like New York writers. Um, it's not all about the cows, but like cows, Wisconsin writers are generally very sincere. We have very few pretenses, so we really focus on the quality of our work rather than our image. And also true to stereotype, we are hard workers. We don't expect anyone to discover our work for us or sell our books for us. We know we've got to roll up our sleeves and do it ourselves. Also true, we are generally very nice, like Midwest nice though. So it's got a little bit of an edge to it. Yeah, watch your back. <laughs> the 2013 book was The Beekeeper's Apprentice, which is the first book in the Mary Russell series by Laurie R. King. In this novel, King presents the first meeting between 15-year-old Mary Russell, the young Jewish-American protagonist, and Sherlock Holmes. Their meeting leads to a collaboration between the two, and this first novel focuses primarily on the detective training that Holmes gives to Russell. I just have to note in response to Jennifer's comment uh, that when I went to college in Miami, Florida and told people I was from Wisconsin, uh, some of my friends thought that that was a northern suburb of Chicago. We'll let the uh, chats blow up over that. Um, so 2013 saw the first time that the chosen book's author was able to participate in Door County Reads. Lori R. King Skyped in to the keynote event. Ed Christensen, a Sherlockian and Door County native, was the kickoff speaker, and four Vintage Holmes mystery adventure films were shown, in addition to two Masterpiece Theater Holmes episodes with Benedict Cumberbatch. The Peninsula Players presented two radio plays. Uh, Isadora Theater Company did a staged reading of As Bees and Honey Drown at TAP, and NWTC pr provided a Nancy Drew cooking class. Hi, my name's Liam Callanan. I'm a novelist. My most recent book is called Paris by the Book. And I am coming to you today from Milwaukee's east side, just a few blocks south of the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Go Panthers, which is where I teach in their creative writing program. One of the questions given us was to say, talk a little bit about what Milwaukee means to you as a place to be from or uh, to call your home. I confess I'm a little bit nervous about that because I was born in Washington, D.C. I grew up in Los Angeles. We've only, only, I guess is the word that you would use here, we've only lived in Wisconsin for about 15 years. But we've loved it. My kids love it. My kids are from this place in a way that I was never from Los Angeles or D.C. And I suppose that's what I've learned about Wisconsin, which is this is a place that someone is from. This is a place that gives you roots, that welcomes you even when you're coming from afar. I've certainly found that in the literary community. And I'm really honored to call my writers here, my fellow Wisconsin writers. It's great to be part of it, and I look forward to contributing more to the literary ecosystem and benefiting from it as I have already. Thanks so much. The 2014 chosen book was The Memory of Old Jack by Wendell Berry. Old Jack, born just after the American Civil War and dying in contemporary times, spends one beautiful September day in Port William, his home since birth, remembering. The story tells of the most searing moments of old Jack's life, particularly his debt to his sister, Nancy, and her husband, Ben Feltner, who is old Jack's model of what honorable manhood and strength might be. Crossroads at Big Creek hosted a family homestead fair where there were demonstrations of canning fruits and vegetables, cider pressing, knitting, weaving, spinning, and quilting, in addition to docents who were knowledgeable about family tree searching, gardening, cheese making, butter churning, sustainable local farming, and chicken raising. Mike Orlock presented and led discussions for three films, The Straight Story, Places in the Heart, and The Real Dirt on Farmer John. 
The keynote was presented by Dr. Susan McFadden talking about Old Jack and Port William in the 21st century. My name is uh, Jerry Epps and I live in, uh, in Madison. I write nonfiction books for adults and also for young readers. And I also write novels for adults and for young readers. The focus uh, for my writing is uh, primarily country life and rural history. In each of my novels, I focus on an issue that rural America faces, such things as caring for the environment, demise of the small family farm, land use alternatives, responding to faulty research, and, and more. A thread through all of my novels is how current day issues in agriculture often have a historical root and how understanding this history can inform today's decision makers. As a Wisconsin native, I have a deep love for this state. I am forever discovering something new about its history, its mystery, and its mystique. Ordinary Grace by William Kent Kruger was the chosen book for readers in 2015. The summer of 1961 should have been another ordinary summer for 13-year-old Frank Drum, but it was a summer of hardships, tragedy, grief, adult problems, and questions of faith. Told from Frank's perspective 40 years later, this book is a poignant coming-of-age story with elements of mystery and suspense. Congratulations to, on the 15th anniversary of Door County Reads. I was fortunate to work with Door County Reads back when it was the big read and all together for 10 years. Uh, another important book to me was Ordinary Grace by William Kent Kruger. And I think that was an important book for the whole community. He really uh, drew a large audience at Crossroads to speak. And I uh, dressed in costume as a character from that book, I, the minister's wife, and was very impressed that Door County, which seems to take care of everything, had a costume closet that schools used and I used, and for very little money, rented my minister's wife dress. And I will confess now, I could barely breathe when I was wearing that dress. As Becca said, Ordinary Grace was a book that had a huge impact on the readers of Door County. Author William Kent Krieger spoke at Crossroads at Big Creek to a standing room only audience. Right on Door County conducted a gratitude journal workshop led by Jared Santek and a space race family fair was held to celebrate the amazing accomplishments and adventurous spirit of the 1960s. American Dervish by Ayed Akhtar, the 2016 Door County Reads book, is a brilliantly written, nuanced, and emotionally forceful look inside the interplay of religion and modern life. The author was raised in the Midwest himself, and through the main character, Hyatt Shah, he shows readers vividly the powerful forces at work on young men and women growing up Muslim in America. The multi-talented Ayad Akhtar is an award-winning playwright and filmmaker as well. Isadora Theater Company staged a reading of Actors Disgraced, and the players staged a reading of The Who and the What, a film that Actor and Columbia University School of the Arts classmates wrote starring Actor was shown with discussion led by Mike Orlock. Presentations were given, including understanding, understanding Islam, fact and fallacy, a visit from a member of the Islamic Society of Wisconsin, and the Green Bay Masjid, a family cultural fair and a poetry workshop given by Anne Heiss. Hello all, my name is Tracy Vricky, and I have been involved with Door County Reads for many years, from the beginning in fact. For the 2008 and the 2009 Door County Reads, I participated as a community member, but I was hired by the Door County Library in 2009 and was lucky enough to be asked to serve on the Door County Reads Planning Committee. I've been there for every read since. I have so many favorite memories, the Nancy Drew cooking class, the visit from the state water librarian, amazing theater productions, learning about the Hmong journey, 
the food, the art, the book discussions, and so many, many things I love about Door County Reads. But being a librarian and a Door County community member, the two things I like best about the Door County Library's community read is the reading and the community. I have read every Door County Reads book. Some have become lifetime favorites. Some have surprised me and some I might not choose to reread, but all have expanded my worldview in ways that only books can. And the community piece, as they say, is priceless. Over the years, Door County Reads has facilitated so many community partnerships, too many to mention. Over and over again, I have been amazed at the beauty and talent and generosity of this community I call home. Congratulations to Door County Reads on its 15th anniversary. Here's to many more. On the 10th anniversary of the community read, Empire Falls by Richard Russo was the chosen book. This book, which won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 2002, follows the star story of Miles Roby in a fictional small blue collar town in Maine and the people, places, and the past surrounding him as manager of the Empire Grill Diner. Brett B. Coy was the keynote speaker at the Empire Falls kickoff celebration with music by Katie Dahl and Rich Higdon. The event wrapped up with a panel discussion on food titled, The Next Best Thing to Eating Food is Talking About It, and included local restaurant buffs, Sandy Andres, Phil Burnt, Miles Danhausen, Holly Habel, and Veronica Bug Rip, sharing their favorite food and restaurant related stories and experiences, moderated by Tracy Freaky. I'm Jane Hamilton. I live in Racine County in a little town called Rochester. I wrote The Book of Ruth long ago and more, most recently The Excellent Lombards. Here's my feeling about Wisconsin. I grew up in Oak Park, Illinois. My grandmother sent all of her grandchildren when they were of age, that is to say eight years old, to Swisscroft, a farm camp in Delavan, Wisconsin. So naturally then, my goal was to grow up and marry a farmer and live in Wisconsin. It's not only because of Swisscroft. Oh, we're from Swisscroft. We play the hayloft and we L-O-V-E love it all the T-I-M-E time. But because my ancestral home was in Wisconsin in Twin Lakes on Lake Elizabeth. My great grandfather built the house in the 1870s to escape the heat and cholera of Chicago to bring his family there into beauty and safety. That house now is sadly gone. The land has been sold. The Hamilton family busted up over it as so many families do over family property. Um, but I did decades ago, in fact, marry a farmer and have spent my whole adult life living on an orchard. And our duty now as a family is to protect the land, um, to keep it vibrant and healthy and um, secure for generations to come if we possibly can. And I'm so grateful that um, I have been able to live in the beauty of Wisconsin and um, the interesting craziness of our state. And um, I would like to keep this land as intact as we can, as we are surrounded by strip malls and subdivisions. It's what I owe this beautiful world and this life for which I am unutterably grateful. The Late Homecomer by Kao Kalia Yang is a memoir which presents the journey from a Hmong refugee camp to America and the hardships and joys of a family struggle to adapt in a strange culture while holding on to traditions that are passed down from her beloved grandmother. The Late Homecomer was another book that touched a chord in many Door County Reads participants. Of particular note was the author Kao Kalia Yang's visit to Door County and the keynote presentation at Stone Harbor. Ms. Yang's presence and caring made each attendee feel like she was speaking directly to them. Ms. Yang also visited Gibraltar and Sevastopol schools to speak with over 400 students. 
There were special memoir writing workshops and the screening of two films, Being Hmong Means Being Free and Gran Torino. A special presentation discussion was held at Crossroads at Big Creek titled U.S. Vietnam History Hmong Veterans Panel with members of the Green Bay Hmong community speaking and Dick Campbell moderating. Author Kao Kalia Yang sent us her greetings. Congratulations on 15 years. This is an incredible statement of the steadfast commitment to literacy in your community. I'm so happy to have taken part and hope to visit again sometime in the next 15 years. Door County Reads opens possibilities and pathways for its community to engage with stories near and far, with writers from around the country, stories from around the world. Hola. A poet, fiction writer, and playwright, my name is Mauricio Kilwan Guevara. One of my books is called Autobiography of So-and-So, and I'm currently working on a novel entitled Thieves. I divide my time between two places. One is a small home in Milwaukee's Bayview neighborhood, and the other is a cottage in Northern Door, steps away from the bay. Here's the question posed by Door County Reads that I chose to answer. If you were not born or raised here, why did you choose to make Wisconsin your home? The short answer is education, the earth, work, and love. I came to Wisconsin in the fall of 1987 to begin a PhD in English and Comparative Literature at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Although born in the Andes of Colombia, South America, I was raised in Pittsburgh, PA, a place famous for its three rivers. Milwaukee likewise has three important rivers, the Milwaukee, the Kinnikinnik, and the Menominee. Like the water that sustains us every day, there are many tributaries that connect the various parts of my life. I've now resided in Wisconsin longer than I have lived anywhere else. But the first time I came here, in 1987, I was 26 years old. I remember thinking how both Milwaukee and Pittsburgh have many things in common. They have working class roots. The people come from various nationalities and racial groups. There is a great love of festivals and fish fries and beer. But some things were very different. Namely, there were no steep foothills connecting to the Appalachian Mountains. What I soon learned is that the flatness for which the Midwest is famous is a consequence of glaciation, which eventually gave Door County and Milwaukee something that Pittsburgh lacks, Lake Michigan from the Ojibwa, Michigami, for great water. In 1987, in my first graduate class at UWM, there was a young woman who sat on the other side of the room who caught my eye, not only for the obvious reason that she had a beautiful bright smile, but I noticed that whenever she spoke in class, she shared insightful observations about the novels we were reading. Three years later, my first marriage had ended, and I was soon dating Janet Jennerjohn a sophisticated lover of coffee, poetry, and life. A few, in a few years, she would become my editor, my wife, and the mother of our two boys, Andres and Diego. Doctorate in hand, I taught for a dozen years in Western PA when UWM recruited me to return to my alma mater. The UW system has an ethos of which all Wisconsinites should be proud. It's called the Wisconsin Idea which values the search for truth and the accessibility of public education for every citizen. Both Door County Reads and Right on Door County carry on this proud and noble tradition. I feel very privileged to call both Milwaukee and Door County my home. In the language of the Ho-Chunk people, one of the first inhabitants of the peninsula, I say, Pinajiji, thank you to all living things, to the land, to the water that sustains, to the air we breathe, and to the ancestors who are always beside us. 2019 was the first year that Dark County Reed supported two books by two different authors. The Death and Life of the Great Lakes is prize-winning reporter Dan Egan's compulsively readable portrait of an ecological catastrophe happening right before our eyes. 
blending the epic story of the lakes with an examination of the perils they face and the ways we can restore and preserve them for generations to come. Wintering by Peter Guy portrays elderly demented Harry Ide who steps out of his sickbed and disappears into the brutal unforgiving Minnesota wilderness that surrounds his hometown of Gunflint. It's not the first time Harry has vanished. 30 odd years earlier in 1963, he'd fled his marriage with his 18 year old son Gustav in tow. With Harry gone for the second and last time, unable to survive the woods he'd once braved, his son Gus, now grown, sets out to relate the story of their first disappearance, bears and ice flows and all, to Barrett Lovig, an old woman who shares a special, if turbulent, bond with Harry. My name is Coggin Herringa, and I work at Crossroads at Big Creek. And I guess my role is I have been able to host many of the programs as a part of Door County Reads at Crossroads. And so I've been very involved in reading everything to be prepared, and then had the wonderful experience of having these activities take place in our facility. Of all the books, I think my favorite was The Death and Life of the Great Lakes. And I had read it before it became a Door County Reads book. And in fact, that book was what inspired the year we had the um, Celebrate Water activity. And Celebrate Water was sponsored by Healthy Water Door County. And Healthy Water Door County was so intent on having the community read this book, we went to the library and said, could you have this be our book this year? And indeed they did allow us to have that be the book. And then um, I guess my role that I'm most pleased about, my happiest memory was they invited me to do the introduction the day Dan Egan gave the keynote address. He is the author of the book. And that was just a wonderful, wonderful memory. As Coggin mentioned, Door County Reads supported the Celebrate Water initiative by featuring both the book by Dan Egan about big water and the book by Peter Guy about smaller water, both vital to human survival. And we had both of them here to speak to our audiences. Um, so we provided a nonfiction book and a fiction book to please readers who prefer one over the other. The Door County Community Foundation has been privileged to be a supporter of Door County Reads and actually going back to the big read um, virtually since the very beginning. Uh, we've been pleased to be able to support the program because it's important to us that our community have a, an experience of something together. About five years ago, the Community Foundation had the idea of helping our community to understand the value that water brings to our community, as well as the threats to water that we face as people who live on a peninsula literally surrounded by water. And so we came up with the idea of a year to celebrate water. And what works so wonderfully is that same time, Dan Egan, the author with Local Connections, uh, had written The Death and the Life of the Great Lakes. And so we partnered with Door County Reads to make that one of the books that the entire community read. And it was a launch point for an entire year-long effort of conversations, of discussions, of uh, public speakers coming in from in our community and outside. We even had a water summit up at the landmark in which people came from all around the Great Lakes to talk about what water means to our community. And it's just another way that Door County Reads has been instrumental at getting our community to talk about issues at the same time. The 2019 keynote speaker, Ann Moser, Senior Special Librarian and Education Coordinator for Wisconsin Water Library, sent us a message upon hearing about the 15th anniversary. I am honored to have been invited to be involved in the Door County Reads program as a librarian and Great Lakes educator. The connection that community members feel to their library system and to the place they live is so strong, and this program is an excellent way to celebrate those connections. To explore the Great Lakes and Door County through both fiction and nonfiction was a delight and made me appreciate again the jewel of this part of our state. Congratulations on 15 years of great programming and community reading. I can't wait to see what the next 15 years bring. Door County is a special place 
and this reading program is an example of why it is so special. The 2020 book, Virgil Wander by Leif Enger, portrays Midwestern movie house owner, Virgil Wander, who is cruising along at medium altitude when his car flies off the road into icy Lake Superior. Virgil survives, but his language and memory are altered and he emerges into a world no longer familiar to him. With intelligent humor and captivating whimsy, the author conjures a remarkable portrait of a region and its residents who, for reasons of choice or circumstance, never made it out of their defunct industrial district home. Author Leif Enger, visit us for a wonderful kickoff program at Sturgeon Bay High School Auditorium. His humor and sincerity were well received by the large audience. There was a Great Lakes surfing pizza dinner and talk complete with the backup band presented by Ryan Heisey, which was a blast. Katie Dahl performed music of Bob Dylan and three theater play readings were performed. Marjorie Prime by Tap, Popcorn Falls by The Players, and Fishing for Methuselah by the Children's Readers Theater. We also brought back book and theme trivia with Steve Rice doing the MC honors. I'm Don Till W. Moniz, the author of the debut story collection, Milk Blood Heat. Um, and I write fiction and I currently live in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I am actually not from Wisconsin. I'm from Florida um, and I had never really thought of Wisconsin like as a place um, ever before coming to live here. But in about like 2015, I decided that I wanted to give my writing a real shot, a real chance, and I wanted to take myself seriously. And I applied to the graduate creative writing program at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and got in and came to live here and just was like, oh, you know, just so astounded by like how different it felt than, than where I came from. Um, you know, the air, seasons, that whole kind of thing. And so this space, you know, being in this city, in this state, really nurtured my um, creative impulses and allowed me to find the confidence to finish this book and um, publish it out into the world. You know, so though Madison is not the place that I'm from, uh, Wisconsin, I do think that I do think of it as a home. It's a home of my creative work. It's where I came to teach and to learn and to, you know, to find and lean into my own um, creative aesthetics. And now um, I'm currently living here, um, probably permanently. Um, I am now an assistant professor of the same program that I graduated from three years ago. And so, you know, now Madison and Wisconsin is just as a part of me as Florida. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how eventually that manifests into the work. In 2021, we read Station 11 by Emily St. John Mandel. It takes place in the Great Lakes region before and after a fictional swine flu pandemic known as the Georgia flu has devastated the world, killing most of the population. Station 11 was chosen as the first NEA Big Read book since 2010, when we decided once again to pursue an NEA Big Read grant. We applied for the grant in January 2019, thinking that a book about a pandemic and how the arts helps humanity survive would be an interesting change from recent nonfiction selections. Little did we know that within a couple months after the application was submitted for the Big Read, a worldwide pandemic would be underway. We went ahead with Station 11 as our chosen book since we secured the grant and the book title is tied to the grant. And there was also the thought that people might want to talk about their current pandemic situations and decompress with others uh, in an all virtual setting as we delved into the book and its themes. Well, hi, we are the uh, Rockways. I'm Cheryl Rockway and, and this I'm is Todd Rockway. Todd Rockway. And the first year we didn't realize how many extra events were actually out there besides just listening to the author and, and talking about the book. But since then we know that uh, the theater community uh, participates, the music community participates. There's just many, many different things. You could, you could be as busy as you wanted to be with the Door County Reads. So it's an excellent program, I think. Right. So and, and having the authors come and, and talk about the books are, is wonderful. I mean, that's, uh, you just get a better perspective of what, what we've read and what we've discussed in our book club. 
So it's been very good. And even if they can't come, like last year when right. we had the uh, pandemic going on, Emily St. John um, was able to uh, Zoom with us on many different aspects. And so, you know, that's fine too. Well, that's that, fine that too. was actually excellent because <laughs> Station Eleven was an interesting book. It was very different than a lot of other things that we've read. And um, having her speak about it and, and give us a little background of, of all of this was quite nice. I, I, it was very yeah. useful. Yeah. We thought that was an excellent pick for the that was, pandemic it was, year. It was excellent, that's right. <laughs> I would agree. Um, so I, I think we just want to say a happy 15th anniversary to Door County Reads. Keep it yeah. going and, uh, and we support you all the way. Yeah, and it's a great thing, especially since before we moved up here, we didn't understand well, what do you do in the wintertime in Door County? <laughs> well, you do a lot of things in the, in the winter in Door County, and Door County Reads is a, is a great way to spend February, I think. So great. it's very good. Yeah. So thanks. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And that brings us to our current Door County Reads 2022 choices, Population 485, Meeting Your Neighbors One Siren at a Time, and Truck, A Love Story, both by Michael Perry. Two books, one author. Now, Michael Perry is no stranger to Door County and has participated in programs both in person and online. The Door County Reads Committee felt that it was time to honor Mr. Perry's contribution to Wisconsin literature and lore by visiting two of his books and exploring themes found throughout them. In Population 485, Meeting Your Neighbors One Siren at a Time, writer Michael Perry returned to his tiny childhood town, New Auburn, Wisconsin, after 12 years away and joined the village's volunteer fire and rescue department. Six years later, he'd begun to understand at last that to truly live in a place, you must give your life to the place. The charming discursive essays are loosely structured around the calls Perry responds to as a volunteer EMT, including everything from a collision at the local laundromat to heart attacks, fires, and suicides. In Truck, A Love Story, Perry delivers the next account of his somewhat idiosyncratic life and times. He focuses on two main events over the course of a year, fixing up a 1951 international harvester pickup truck and developing a romance with a local woman after a long stretch of failed relationships. So that is the chronicle of our yearly reading event, which occurs in the middle of Door County winter, the slow time of year. We are so grateful that you, the readers, have come on this journey with us for the past 14 years and invite you to continue the journey during this 15th anniversary event. Over the next two and a half weeks, we invite you to participate in one keynote address, one musical performance, one workshop, one trivia event, two presentations, three panels, three film screenings, four play readings, and eight book discussions all based on the writings of Michael Perry and aspects of life and people in Wisconsin. Before we set Door County Reads 2022 in motion, the sources that provided the information for books listed in this retrospective need to be acknowledged and they include book synopses from Reading Ladies, Book Riot, Goodreads, Amazon, Book Browse, W.W. Norton, Penguin Random House, Leafanger.com, Birdsbooks.com, Wikipedia, Sparknotes, CityLights.com, and WorldCat. I would also like to thank our sponsors without, without whom Door County Reads Festival 2022 would be impossible to present. At the premier level, the Door County Library Foundation. At the platinum level, the Friends of Door County Libraries. And at the bronze level, the University of Wisconsin Green Bay College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, Writing and Applied Arts and English, and right on Door County. Producing Door County Reads involves many presenters and partners, and I would like to thank them in advance and let you know who they all are. The Door County Reads Committee, Jared Santek, Beth Locken, Laura Kayakan, Morgan Mann, Rebecca Buckman, Rebecca Meacham, Alan Kapishki. Door County Library Branch Managers, Barb Hush, Tracy Opper, Janine Brennan, Mary Sawyer, Alicia Edelman, Christina Johnson, Laura Hale. The Door County Library Book Discussion Groups, Bailey's Book Club, Between the Pages, Bittersweet Bookies, Ephraim Book Group, Multicultural Book Group, 
Reader's Rampant Book Group, and the numerous private book discussion groups around Door County. Authors Batiste Paul, Miranda Paul, Jennifer Morales, Liam Callanan, Jerry Apps, Jane Hamilton, Mauricio Kilwine Guevara, and Dantiel Moniz. Midsummer's Music, Allison Fleck and the Griffin String Quartet, Dora Shakespeare and Michael Stebbins, The Peninsula Players with Brian Kelsey and Linda Fortunato, Third Avenue Playworks, Amy Frank and Jacob Jansen, The Rogue Theater, The Crest Pavilion, Becca Berger, Tracy Vreeke, Kagan Herringa, Brett Bicoy, Holly Summerhalder, Sean Rosendale, Cheryl and Todd Brockway, UW Madison Badger Talks and Professor Joe Salmons, Novel Bay Booksellers, PBS Wisconsin, David Siegel, Chris Hecht, Ann Jensen, Paul Swanson, Helen Hecht, Erica DeFeer, Mark DeKaiser, and Richard Olson, Crossroads at Big Creek, Door County Auditorium, Stephen Rice, Kathy Greer, Kimberly Baser, Christina Clancy, Andrew Graff, John Hildebrand, Patricia Skalka, the NWTC Learning and Innovation Center with Lisa Tetzloff and Stephanie Pavick, the Chippewa Valley Writers Guild, Lake Superior Writers, Wisconsin Chapter of the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets, Wisconsin Writers Association, and Woodlawn Pattern. And thanks to all of you, the readers and participants in Door County Reads events over the last 15 years. Your participation is what makes this all possible. We hope you will join us over the next two and a half weeks to celebrate reading, community, Michael Perry, Wisconsin writers, and Wisconsin and Door County. Be sure to visit doorcountyreads.org for all the details and how to connect with events. And coming up soon on January 31st, Dor Shakespeare will present readings of Infancy and The Rivers Under the Earth by Wisconsin's own Thornton Wilder at 7 p.m. Then Egg Harbor Library will screen a short film from Michael Perry titled How You Doin' at 4 p.m. on February 1st. There will also be multiple book discussions at the Ephraim, Sturgeon Bay, Washington Island, Bailey's Harbor branches, and Novel Bay booksellers in the upcoming week. And don't miss a Badger Talk on English in Wisconsin on February 3rd, a play reading of Dairyland by Third Avenue Playworks on February 4th, a panel discussion with Door County firefighters and EMTs, and the keynote presentation by author Michael Perry, both on February 5th. And now we will send you on your way with one final video greeting. Hello, my name is Brian Kelsey, and I'm the managing director of Peninsula Players Theater. Over the past 15 years, it has been my pleasure to partner with Door County Library in bringing a number of novels to this rich community. We have been so fortunate to have the opportunity to have so many cultural organizations gather around a piece of literature and represent it in various ways, from book readings, play readings, concerts, and book discussions. I would say during the past 15 years, my favorite book was William Kent Kruger's Ordinary Grace. I don't know what it was about it, but it just captured me immediately with William Kent Kruger's amazing storytelling ability. Because of that Door County Reads, I have now read 21 of his books, his entire Cork O'Connor series, as well as his standalone novels, all of them equally brilliant and equally engaging. Had it not been for this program, I would not have listened or read as many books as I have on such varying topics. It has been a pleasure to hold annual play readings in conjunction with this program and seeing our community gather in early February at Bjork Linden and listen to the words of the actors we are able to bring to Door County to share some wonderful story. It is my hope that this program lasts for 15 years more and I wish nothing but the best to the Door County Library System on these 15 amazing years. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And we will be seeing you at the Door County Reads Festival 2022 upcoming events. Mm -hmm.